Hello and welcome back and today I want to do another before you buy. I want to help you guys decide whether you should go for a two bay NAS or not. But before we go any further, a disclaimer straight off the bat. Continuing, moving forward, if you've watched the other videos you heard this, I've got all manner of building work happening in the building next door and try as I might to remove it, some of it might seep through into the recording. So I apologise in advance if that happens. Also, it's worth highlighting that today's video, because I'm talking about two bays, do remember, I'm not advocating them and I'm not saying that you shouldn't go for them. This is about giving you five reasons why you might want to consider it for your next NAS purchase, not specifically this one, but any two bay, and five reasons why you might want to give them a miss and go for something a bit bigger or a bit smaller. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. Reason number one that you might want to buy a two bay NAS, simply the affordability. It gives you pretty much the base point for everything in terms of raid performance there with a couple of drives inside so you've got a fail you've got that foul safe that safety net you've got the ability with a couple of drives generally you've got one or two gbe on the rear there depending on the two bays you go for a lot of cpus inside you see a lot of quad core cpus inside and ultimately when it comes to making the first step into a you know a more reliable more stable form of network attached storage two bays are generally a great and and ideally the most affordable way to get in and also there's a number of two-way solutions where at that point that's when you see the diversity on the hardware but we'll touch on that more later on reason number two that you might want to consider a two-bay nas it's simply that right now at time of recording in 2021 the range of specifications is pretty impressive i remember as little as two years ago where a two-bay nas when you did go for one the hardware specifications you were getting were fairly dull you got your dual and quad core cpus but generally it was always one gbe it was always just a couple of drives it wasn't very expandable you know the performance you got was pretty predictable fast forward to now when you have got two bays that have got nvme ssd cache inside such as the 720 plus and locker store 2 you've got 10 gbe nas from the likes of asus store in the as40 series and of course terramaster with their f2422 you have got um, PCIe upgradable two bay NASes such as the 253B and D and um, the 251D from QNAP. You've got loads of different, more expandable to, uh, two bays with lots of them arriving with that expandability. And I just think a lot of that hardware in two bays is something that's only happened in the last couple of years. So now you can get a two bay that's got quite a lot under the bonnet. Reason number three that you might want to go for a two bay NAS, they're just a lot more quiet and compact. Now there's a, we'll talk, touch on more about storage later on, but these days two bays can supply enough storage for you know small businesses, even medium businesses with larger drives. And with that, if you're in a close-knit environment, a single office, above a shop, you're, you know, you're a startup that's only got a couple of rooms, a two-bay NAS can make a surprisingly small environmental impact. It can, you know, very small power consumption generally compared to big old server arrays, the noise generated because of the drives and the fan cooling system being so small and uh, smaller in quantity means that they are just generally a more discreet, quiet and compact solution overall especially in 2021 reason number four that you might want to consider a two bay nas comes back to that issue of storage i say issue is actually a huge bonus the idea that now hard drives for nas in the likes of wd red and seagate iron wolf and synology's own drives as well are arriving in 16 tb and even 18 tb in capacity with 20 tb hamr drives on the horizon even if you go up to the 18 or 20 TB in this two bay, with a RAID, that is a huge amount of storage potential in this tiny little compact device. Yes, it'll up the power consumption a little bit and it'll certainly up the noise a little bit, but it's still great than a two bay NAS storage total capacity is not off the table. You can get some great maximum storage values. And reason number five that you might want to consider a two bay NAS, something I touched on earlier a little bit, is Two bays in 2021 are a lot more expandable than they've ever been. One of the early limitations of two bays, and I talked about this in a video a few years ago, is that when you've got a two bay, you might be thinking, yeah, cool, I can get a job done for a few years. Very few two bay NASs were expandable in an effective way. Synology only had the one two bay that was expandable, 
and most other ranges from other brands were not expandable at all really and when you were expanding they hadn't really facilitated expansion options that tailored to a little step not because going for a two bay that's expandable is one thing going for a two bay that's expandable with another eight or 12 drives is lunacy because you need stop gaps in between now currently pretty much all of the fully featured two bay NASs currently available in 2021 from all the NAS brands are expandable with special attention I would say to be given to QNAP who have got two four six eight uh, bay uh, expansion devices and larger that are supported by their two bay series connected via USB 3.2 Gen 1, Gen 2 and even PCIe external compatible expansions that can perform three to five thousand megs and again, although Synology still only has, for a desktop at least, um, a 5 uh, and 12 bay expansion, it's still great to see all of the ranges from all the different brands all embracing expandability on a 2-bay solution. But 2-bays, once again, aren't for everyone. There are reasons why you maybe shouldn't consider them for your next server purchase. Reason number one that you probably shouldn't buy a 2-bay NAS is simply the low RAID versus capacity ratio. Now... Although I talk about larger storage drives being available, it should be highlighted that in order to maintain redundancy at, at least a minimum level, so again, you are looking at RAID 1s and SHR and stuff like that, you are looking at a tremendously large spend per terabyte, effectively double, because whatever drives you put inside you, 50% of your capacity is gone as a safety net. So again, in terms of the price for your storage, particularly when you compare it to four bay devices, which allow you to scale the storage versus RAID a lot more effectively, it has to be said that two bays are kind of a gutter ball in terms of price for uh, capacity you know, per terabyte compared to any other storage system. Reason number two that you might not want to consider a two bay NAS, particularly in 2021, is simply um, and I talk, I'm looking off on the side of my notes here because I want to make sure I phrase this right for you. It's about saturating the bandwidth. Because although there are 10 GBE options, although there are 2.5 and 5 GBE options, and although they are expandable as well, it has to be said that on the whole, two bays do a terrible job of saturating the bandwidth. And by that I mean you open up this lovely uh, bandwidth area of storage to the rest of the network, be it lots of users on a switch, or one-to-one -one networking via a switch or direct connection, a two-bay, even populated with SSDs, or even if you put two SSDs in docks connected, um, you know, like little caddy enclosures like the QDA series, they allow you to theoretically install four SSDs inside a two-bay, you still struggle to saturate any kind of decent connection. Even that 10 GBE solution I mentioned earlier from TerraMaster reports a maximum five to 600 megabytes per second performance. And that was using SSDs in a RAID zero environment. So two bays, even on a smaller scale of 2.5 and 5 GBE, have difficulty saturating and filling the full bandwidth. So for all of the big talk about performance and NVMe and stuff like that, generally external performance is always bottlenecked by the system itself and not the external network connectivity. Reason number three that you might not want to consider a two bay, and this is definitely talking to you guys that have come off the back of PC building, you guys that know your CPU from your memory stick, ultimately you guys that buy IT purchases based on the spec sheets, two bay devices have got a glass ceiling of the Celeron processor. If you look at pretty much all the ranges of two bay NASs out there, you will generally never find anything higher than a quad core Celeron processor. Now, things are improving. You know, the newest generation, the J4000 series, and uh, later this year, we are going to start to see some of the earliest uh, examples of four bay NASs using the N5000 series of Celeron processor NASs. We will be seeing those, but the fact still remains that they're still Celerons. And Although they have embedded graphics and they have improved handling and improvements in their memory uh, support as well, up to 16 GB, I think in some of those examples, there's still no avoiding that if you are looking at NASs and hearing all this big, big talk about Pentiums, about Ryzen processors, about your Intel Core processors, if you're hearing all of this big talk with Xeons thrown around, 
none of that applies to two bays. And if you buy a two bay NAS, the best CPU you're ever going to get right now at the time of recording is a Celeron. So if you aren't in love with that and you feel like that's going to restrict you, um, that has to be something you factor in when thinking about your storage. Reason number four that you might want to consider a two bay NAS, uh, you, you might not, I should say, want to consider uh, a two bay NAS comes back to that memory. Now, I mentioned there that towards the end of this year, we are going to start to see the next generation of Celeron-based CPUs uh, being installed on NAS. But at the current time, the J4000 series maximum that we're seeing around that J4125 processor has an 8 gig officially supported limit there about what the CPU can do. Now, we have experimented with installing uh, larger memory amounts, and it has been recognized, although the utilize, the full utilization of that memory with the CPU is still under question. But there's still no avoiding that a two-bay NAS, generally, if you want to stick with your supported and not invalidate your warranty, and none of that stuff that you feel might be a bit shouldn't do that, it's worth highlighting that a two-bay caps out at eight gig. And if you are running four cameras, if you are running one VM, if you are running a Plex Media Server, 8 gig of memory is going to really, really feel tight pretty quick. So again, if you are looking to maximise one of those three things I just mentioned, or want to run all of them simultaneously along with containers, along with AI-powered photo recognition, along with all the other backup services and cloud migration and synchronization. 8 gig is really going to run thin, so bear that in mind. Reason number five, that you might not want to buy a two bay, and this one I think is going to be relative to only a few people. The price difference between a two bay and a four bay, generally when you look at like for like CPUs, like for like memory, when you have these ranges like the 53D from QNAP or the 20 plus series from Synology or even the locker stores, the minute you look at the twos and the four bays, you realize the only price difference between them. It's about 100 to 150 quid. Now, I say only. It's a lot of money. Come on, let's give it the respect it deserves. 150 great British pounds. But the fact still remains that if you scale back your storage, so if you were going to put 8 TBs and you knock them down to 6s, you make a saving there of between 30 and 60 quid. And a lot of the 4 bays nullify a lot of the negatives that we've talked about. You get a better low price versus uh, price per terabyte with your rate configuration, you have a better chance of saturating the bandwidth. You get better CPU options as well. And with those better CPUs become better memory. So although it's a bit intangible as a point about why you might not want to buy a two bait, it's worth highlighting with your budget. So if you've appropriated this much and this much is storage and this much is NAS, all you've got to do is trim the storage a little bit Maybe on this four bay NAS, put two drives in instead of four, and the money that you could save by lowering that terabyte capacity and adding drives later can allow a four bay over a two. But this has been my before you buy about two bay NAS servers. If you've enjoyed it, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. There's links in the description to pretty much everything I've talked about today, along with a bunch of stuff there to NAS compare in the guides. But otherwise, I will see you next time.